Hello, and I wanted to welcome you to the second series of tutorials that I'm doing on animation, traditional animation, and this tutorial will cover animation in Photoshop. Doing animation in Photoshop has a lot of advantages over doing animation in Flash and in other programs such as After Effects because we have access to all of the n tools we would use normally to make pictures and paintings that most people will do and post online and show their work to friends but in this case we can open up the animation window and be able to use all of the tools those tools to create animation so we have access of course to the brushes and the filters and all the custom tools that we would normally use in Photoshop to create some really neat animations and that's all hidden functionality within Photoshop CS3 and above. So if you're familiar with this then this will be uh, boring for you but if you're not familiar with this and are timid about using the Photoshop inter interface to do animation then this will be a good tutorial for you. When you open up Photoshop the interface is not usually set to the timeline view which is going to be a more useful way to work with animation here. You will look, you'll be looking at the frames view uh, when you open up Photoshop which is only going to be useful in creating animation from the layers that you create. Most people work with layers so that whenever they end up uh, wanting to do animation they will have to use a command animate with layers that's going to be located within the animation window. You'll have to create several layers in order to do this. The best setup for working with animation in Photoshop is to have your animation window open, of course, and to have your, uh, say, have your navigator e with e within easy access, within easy reach, so you can zoom in and handle any details that you need to work out whenever you're working with your drawings. And also, if you're working in an uh, actions palette with an actions palette, it's definitely useful to have your actions palette set to button mode as opposed to command mode and I have created several actions which correspond with the animation setup workflow which I can just press in order to create the certain reaction that I need to create or to do any certain things that I need to do these commands are all usually from the video layers palette which I can you know which you can access from the layers palette Okay, so with this setup, it has a zoom setting at the very bottom, like in After Effects. So you can zoom in and out and see, uh, you know, where you exactly are you on the timeline down to one frame. You also have onion skinning, which will show you as many frames as you want uh, of the animation in front or behind the current picture that you're looking at. You can choose how many uh, frames before or after you want to look at and they'll fade gradually and you also can choose the mode that the style the style of mode that is actually there displayed in so uh, you, most people work with multiply and that that's the most common setting that's what it's set out to begin with and that's probably what you should leave it at you can also change document settings which doesn't mean much uh, ex in terms of anything except for the frame rate I usually go with 24 because animation looks natural at 24 and you could change the duration as well Okay, so what I did was I set up several keyframes here and I have my keyframes numbered on the frame that they're going to be on and I'm working with my buttons actions menu and I've created several actions which should help me through this process. And uh, Buttons are just the actions that I made are from the video layers menu and you have to be on the right layer to use the right button of course. So if I'm uh, going to be working with these keyframes I and I want to do something which is equivalent to an animation uh, task say uh, maybe I want to make a tween or uh, I want to just do away with a piece of paper that I didn't like um, I can add tween here which I have just uh, pressed here and add tween is the equivalent of adding a, a page between two major key drawings and uh, of course once again you have to be on the right layer to do that so hopefully will be able to figure that out here and get to the right layer and uh, um, so basically you have to be on the right layer and if you go ahead and press add tween it creates a blank page between two keyframes or between two drawings and on that page you can um, 
you can add the transition uh, drawing that you need to do and the good thing about using Photoshop is that you can use all the brushes that you would normally use and the brushing does not correct like in Flash. Uh, in Flash if you brush usually there is a correction um, uh, I think something that corrects the the brushing that you do or the drawing and I didn't like that so uh, if you come in at Photoshop you'll be able to draw whatever you like and it will stay the way you drew it so if you create a, a new drawing um, it should go nicely within the drawing that you between the two drawings that you make and you can also Xerox or erase uh, Xeroxing means you just add another uh, frame which means if you're animating on twos you can just Xerox everything and if you erase it just means you didn't like the drawing that you made and it destroys the key drawing so you can either make another one or just not make one at all and then I have two commands which help me scroll forward and backward as well so you can make any actions that you want to make and they're all from this video layers menu you can also import footage that you like and I think the import formats are either AVI or QuickTime and you can pretty much import any uh, QuickTime I suggest that it's uh, maybe a smaller um, maybe two seconds or five seconds because uh, sometimes the uh, the scratch disk doesn't like that or if your computer uh, is running low on memory you won't be able to open the file whenever you are coming back into the file to work with the file and when you import this video you can you can use it as a normal layer uh, of course it'll be a video layer but you can use it like you would normally use layers and importing videos is good for maybe rotoscoping or just uh, guiding you towards making good drawings and that's the cool thing about Photoshop it's really easy to use uh, animation in that and not too many people know that so uh, if you're really enthusiastic about a really freeform way of creating animation this is the way to do it now if you're looking to export you can always use uh, the export option to export your video you can export video uh, as individual frames or you can export uh, entire videos and there's a lot of formats that it exports the only the only uh, problem with that is that it does not export uh, GIF animated GIF which is surprising because uh, um, most of uh, the other programs do that. After Effects does that and so it's Flash but uh, Photoshop does not support the export of animated GIFs so uh, if you're looking to create an animated GIF this is probably not the place to do it. You could export a video to another program and then get that done but usually it doesn't work or it does not work in Photoshop. So of course there is this option to create uh, animation from layers and uh, it's not too useful but if you look down in the uh, the animation window now you can choose how long you want the animation to be on the screen this particular frame from that layer to be on the screen and it's a kind of funny way to work with the animation and I don't recommend it so I, I would rather work with the timeline and it seems the most natural form uh, natural way to work with animation um, in terms of creating normal animation and this is how easy it is to use you can just draw a frame on uh, on one frame go to the next frame and make another drawing and of course you can use onion skinning as if it were a light box and uh, it's all there you can just turn it on and off whenever you want to to see the last frame that you made or the next frame that you made and then just scroll through like you would normally flip through over a light box uh, uh, as you can see here, I've drawn a little bouncing ball uh, that most people are familiar with from their animation classes. And that's the way to work with animation here in Photoshop.